Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about something crazy, strange, but incredibly important. Kind of got sparked recently with a post or video that Candace Owens made where she said this. And I said to him, listen, I'm not a flat earther, I'm not a round earther. Actually what I am is I am somebody who has left the cult of science. I have left the mega church of science because what I have now realized is that science, what it is actually, if you think about it, is a pagan faith. Science is a pagan faith. It's a cult. <laughs> Let's get into it. My king's coming back, that's what I'm banking on. Please celebrate the grace of God with that filet mignon. I'm just saying we came a long way from in the grave to where we're at now. Okay, so Candace Owens, um, she's created a lot of kerfuffle on the internet from this statement that she made, which on its face is absolutely outlandish um, and flies directly in the face of a very science-focused generation or generations of people that absolutely believe and trust in the science. Um, unfortunately, the science itself is not always truthful. And that's where the problem is. And I think this is kind of what Candace Owens is touching on here. Um, it's something that I have struggled with for a long time is just seeing how science is so heavily influenced in mainstream science um, by forces of finances and politics, uh, fellow mainstream scientists who do not allow disagreement in their various fields of study and will actually take legal action to push people that disagree out of the sciences, uh, creating like a, an ivory tower of science. This is scientism. It's not real science. So in my view, what Candace is speaking against is scientism, um, which is like a cult. It is, um, it, it, you know, we see people saying, trust the science or, you know, I effing love science. But what they're referring to usually is a bunch of ideas that they agree with uh, in a certain political direction a lot of times where there are scientists in the mainstream that have shared favorable understandings of things that they agree with therefore it agrees with them and then they effing love science but the dissidents the other scientists that disagree are often sidelined and their voices are not allowed to be heard they're not allowed to publish in mainstream most popular scientific publications because the peers that need to peer review them are all influenced in the same direction a lot of times this this happens peer review in itself is a good thing but what's happening now um, on certain fronts is there's bifurcations in science where totally separate scientific organizations are rising up with their own peer groups so that they can have their own peer reviews and publications rather than mashing about and figuring things out on a global level or on a um, you know scientific stage that everybody is involved in. The right voice, the most proven voice wins, which is how science used to be. You know, science, the scientific greats um, all had, did not have peer review and, and many of them had beliefs in God. And this is where my perspective leans, um, you know, because I, I've met God, he changed my life. <laughs> I will never be the same again. Therefore, anybody that says that there is no God to me is absolutely out to lunch. They are missing real science completely. However, there are people on the other side that are complete atheists that completely believe that anybody who believes in God is out to lunch and they are not real scientists. And a lot of times those voices have the loudest voice in the science, in mainstream sciences, even though the facts themselves, when analyzed through the scientific method will prove them wrong on compiled stacked evidence, 
they will still manipulate their view to be the one that's correct. So this is where scientism comes in. And I just want to listen in a little bit more on what Candace was talking about, because this this kind of came out of left field and a bunch of people ridiculed her online. I mean, if we go X, you know, there's people saying, this is one of the most moronic things I have ever heard. I deal with gender activists every day. Nobody should take at real Candace O seriously. You know, this guy here, he says, Colin, I like your work, but this is lazy and intellectually dishonest. What Candace is saying might sound extreme to some, but there is a deeper argument that science, particularly when elevated to the status of scientism, is self-referential and circular, much like a religion. And this is this is where my perspective is coming from. So let's hear what Candace actually was saying, um, because she did say a bunch of things that kind of connected why she came to this conclusion. So let's just listen in. A woman tweeted this. You may have seen me retweet this over the weekend. Her name is Beth. She wrote this. Years ago, I was assured that an IUD was safe, effective, and could be removed at any point if I decided on having more children. It was FDA approved, after all. Ovarian cysts, surgery, infections, a week in the hospital, and infertility. That was what they meant by safe and effective. And this really hit home for me, and I felt tremendously compassionate for her because I'm obviously of the baby-making age, and so many of my friends are similarly going through fertility issues and similarly realizing that the birth control that they have been given has contributed to that in some way. People that have pelvic inflammatory disease because of the IUD device being in them for decades. And for those of you that are not aware of what that is, it's, it's literally a copper device that is inserted into a woman to make it so that she does not become pregnant. It's, it's birth control, and yes, it is marketed as both safe and effective. So uh, that's kind of her perspective, um, her point that there's a lot of things marketed that are mentioned as safe and effective. They're marketed through science, and it turns out that they just are not that way. Um, the reality is different from what people are being led to. And she goes into uh, the pandemic and how everybody was saying trust the science when there was a lot of issues that were being presented from scientists opposing the vaccine and the masking um, and just how it was being done in very professional ways trying to propose alternative views scientifically that were being shut down their media their social media accounts were being locked they were not allowed to speak on the public stage they weren't allowed to be interviewed on mainstream media. Publications were not allowed. Um, all types of different things were happening. And this is yet another reason why a huge distrust in mainstream science, ha science has risen up more recently. Um, so let's hear a little bit more of what she's saying. All the best stuff, by the way, is marketed as safe and effective. And I was saying to my husband how it's become such a difficult topic to talk about because I am compassionate for my friends that are going through this, but then there's another side of me that is just amazed, confounded, and I genuinely ask this question. I say, how could you, how could any person get to a point where a doctor tells them that putting something that is copper inside of them for a long period of time is perfectly safe and effective and will have no long-term side effects without that person being told the information, just having something that comes online inside, something spiritual, maybe, as opposed to referring to it as your gut instinct, we should refer to it as the Holy Spirit. Your soul takes you and goes, you know, that actually makes no sense. I have suffered from this condition of not trusting authorities when they say something to me that is so obviously stupid my entire life. And I, I contribute that maybe to coming from the school of hard knocks. Genuinely, I think that I'm grateful. I, I am grateful for having gone through the school of hard knocks because you are required to have an element of common sense in order to survive. And when I look at people and they hold on to, but the doctor said this, but the expert said this, and I see how extreme the things that they will do. They were masking two-year-olds because doctors said, no, no, this person, if they breathe, it's going to be a bad thing. Well, I realized that that's a faith. That is a faith and it is not a science. She's saying that there's this point where we will deny our own objective feelings or she called it the Holy Spirit, but it could just be 
you know, we have a sense of something not right, we will throw that out and just follow the science without questioning it. And this is where it becomes scientism. Now, you cannot question absolutely everything because you would never get anywhere in life. You have to trust some things. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, there's, there's many things that are repeatedly provable over the long term that you can put your trust in. God has made things that way. Science exists because God has made things that way. Um, we can examine this world. God, from the biblical perspective, God has made us as creative beings with a mind so that we can also seek knowledge and to understand our surroundings and understand this world that we live in. That's how God has made us. That's, that's where science comes from. We have the ability to understand. The world is not just some chaos with laws that apply one day but not another day the world the universe has systems in place that we can examine and see are repeatable testable and true or false uh, all throughout so we can understand things and and develop technology and build and and refine our skills those things all come from god so i found candace's position grading like, eh. but at the same time, yeah, there's something to what she's saying. And there is a, an extreme faith in science, science. And I put it in quotes because real science is the scientific method, but not all science is that. A lot of science is assumptions based on incorrect reasoning that has been generally understood over a longer period of time and based on those assumptions we have more assumptions but we don't actually really know and we can't actually really test to prove those methodologies and yet we still call it science i think it was uh, during ken ham um ken ham's debate with the science guy bill nye he talked a lot about how the history is in the past we were not there so we don't know everything about it we we have some technologies and some sciences to try and reason what happened in the past but a lot of the past we cannot accurately um, determine scientifically unless we have witnesses that were there that wrote things down recorded what happened then we have a historical record that we can follow to know generally but we still don't know the full details of what happened exactly and um and that's that's true i believe that that stands true from what we've seen there's a lot of things that we've thought we've understood later we find out we were wrong um, that happens throughout the sciences i wanted to take a look a little bit at another another talk show that talked about a little bit on this topic and this was this was Pierce Morgan, and he had uh, Eric Weinstein on, the mathematician, along with some others, and they got into kind of a heated debate on things, and they, they did actually talk a little bit about Candace Owens and Terrence uh, Williams, who was on the Joe Rogan show making outlandish claims of science that he doesn't understand, but he just was pontificating things. Um, and Eric Weinstein actually went on the Joe Rogan show to talk to him directly. Um, and then he received heat for doing that because it, it made it seem like he was legitimizing Terrence's thoughts, but he wasn't. He was actually uh, debating him a little bit. And, and you know, there were some things that were interesting in it, and he was pulling that out. But anyways, let's listen what Eric Weinstein has to say here because he goes into peer review and then he goes into um like the history of peer review and then he goes into what's happening right now in the sciences and in the scientific world you would say that in my field um that uh peer review is much older than uh gillane maxwell who was born in 1961 and it's you cited a bunch of journals in physics and in fact that's simply not true 
Um, in which in part, part of it, Eric? We, 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 well, you know, I, I have Melinda Baldwin's article here, uh, which says, uh, however, most papers accepted for physical review never went out to referees at all. The editor accepted most papers on its own authority, consulting referees only when he thought he might want to reject a paper. It was not until the 1960s that all peer review, that all physical review papers were sent out for external referee opinion. More or less, peer review comes out of Utah in 1972 through Senator Wallace Bennett's amendment. Um, that forces the issue into the NIH framework because the Medicare um, Act was established in 1965, making the U.S. taxpayer responsible for medical payments that they suddenly wanted access to knowing why are we paying all of this money to doctors without the ability to question them. So, you know, in part, what I'm astounded by is that we're not even aware of our own history. If George Green, the Miller with no formal education, um, mailed off a solution to an inversion problem for differential operators, which is what gives us Green's functions, which Feynman made famous. Um, he didn't have any training whatsoever. It's in part very dangerous to be offended when people listen to what we say and they then say, I keep hearing that science is for everyone and that mathematics is a great place to play. There are no bad questions. And then when they appear to take an interest, uh, we cut their heads off. And I, my feeling is, is that uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to state what this is. This is an elite activity. It's elite the way a violinist is elite. It's, a, it's elite the way a surgeon is an elite brain surgeon. You're not going to have somebody. That right there is, it's interesting because the, the scientific method has always been historically uh, people that have a knowledge or an understanding beyond the regular that get interested in studying an area, start to do it and have breakthroughs in their studies. And then it's shared publicly and then it generally gets accepted as true um, or as plausible um, as a working theory, whatever it may be. Um, but now what happens is people get shut down, closed out, pushed off. If they have disagreeable ideas um, and, and the bifurcation that I was talking about earlier has really happened between uh, creation or intelligent design scientists who believe and see in their sciences in vast areas of science we're not we're not talking about religious studies we're talking about um, molecular biology um, cosmology uh, you know every level of science they see divine fingerprints that there's a designer an intelligent being behind what we see and this is the logical conclusion um, that plays out across fields. And they're public, public, they're making articles and publications and research, but they have now had to bifurcate themselves because they're not allowed in mainstream media. In fact, they've been viciously attacked, especially on the evolution front, um, where you know people have lost their tenure. They're they're not allowed to publish in you know, all the mainstream magazines, they get ousted from universities, they get shut up from their professor jobs. Um, they're, they're, this has happened, especially in the last hun hundred years, less than that, um, even from the 60s, as, as he was talking, uh, this has happened on, on an upscale and it's actually wrecking science. It's not science. It's scientism because real science says there could be a God, there could be a designer. Let's investigate everything. Let's not throw out these ideas. Um, even though they may think that they have the solution, often there's another solution that's a better solution. And this is, this is where science has been going wrong. Now he goes on a little bit more uh, to talk about this. There, there's several publications that have come out 
um, like The Slaughter of the Dissidents by Jerry Bergman. Um, there's Descent from Darwin group. There's uh, a bunch of lists of scientists that are dissenting to the neo-Darwinian evolution that are standing up, signing their names onto lists to say, hey, we don't agree with the the current state of evolution. It's not factual. It's not accurate. It's not what's happened. It's not what we're seeing in any of our fields. Um, it's not what genetics is showing. It's the whole evolutionary tree has been cut down. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. There's other explanations that might be along evolutionary lines, but these scientists are not allowed to publish. Now there's some turning that's happening, but this bifurcation has been happening in science to allow people to speak and share what they're finding and what they're seeing in honest ways. And it's basically like a revolution in science that's, that is happening and has to happen uh, for the old guard to be pushed aside and to allow science to be science. And the mindset that there is no God and you're not going to allow a divine foot in the door of science, which was actually stated by Richard Lewontin, a geneticist uh, and a Marxist, he made that statement that we must not allow a divine foot in the door. This is anti-science and it's a problem that's been going on. So let's listen to a little bit more of what Eric says here, because there's another part that I want to just touch on where he goes into where are all the objectors, the dissenters? We are not honest about the extent that this, that this is an elite community. And the last thing that I would, I would add to what you said is um, part of the problem is where are the dissident scientists who don't go along inside of the university system, inside of the research institutions. If you had them, they would have been uh, tarred and feathered during DEI because they would have said, who are these foreign intruders into the academic arena? We must fire them and get them out. Claudine Gay could never have become president of Harvard. What we've done is we've gotten rid of all of the dissenting experts. And the dissenting experts who are going to get up and at the top of their lungs say, hey, we've got a disaster in theoretical physics at the moment. Uh, we have an abomination in the way in which we are pretending that uh, random mutation is decidedly the, uh, the main engine of Darwinian selection. Uh, we're going to pretend that neoclassical economics is on solid ground. Um, all of these things are, are just absolutely silly and effectively, there are no professors who are standing up in good standing as experts doing the job that now Candace Owens is going to fill. Okay. And I promise no. you that it's, it's more expensive to get rid of your dissenters who actually know what they're talking about than it is to open it up to a public that wonders whether they've just end, you know, shortened the life of their child by giving them an unnecessary experimental pseudo vaccine. All right, let me. So that's uh, the the rub that's that's gets to the meat of it and um i just want to take a look a little bit at scripture and i'm going to bring up something that um i've been helping with a little bit uh and encourage you to to take a look at donating towards the cause um because i think it's a good cause um but first timothy says if i grab this the right way here there we go. It says, Timothy, protect what has been entrusted to you, avoiding worldly empty chatter and the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and thereby have gone astray from the faith. Grace be with you. So this is, uh, this is Paul writing to Timothy, and he's saying um, to avoid arguments a false knowledge, um, basically godless chatter, empty chatter, worldly knowledge. And there is a reason for this. And, and it, it's what's happened in my life 
Um, when I came to God, it changed everything. It happened to me when I was in my teens. I experienced, I, I, I was deep in prayer calling out to God that if he exists, I wanted to know him. And I had an encounter with God where just a moment in time, the reality of who God is became very real and it changed my life. In that moment, I was saved. Um, and when you have that, then all these other things just end up being very gray, dull arguments because you've met the maker of heaven and earth. And if science is not allowed to examine science with that perspective, then science itself is falsified because there is a God. And, and when you meet God and you know there is a God and then somebody in a scientific outfit with all their degrees is telling you that there is no God and I know because I've written this great book, it's just ludicrous and it's, it holds no water and it, it makes science delusional. Now, you could argue that I'm delusional for believing in God and you're free to do that. But what happens is when you meet God, you come to realize who he is. You, you it changes your perspective. One of my favorite verses is in Psalms and it says this, for a day in your courts, this is Psalm 81, no, 84, 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. And this is what happens when you meet God. One day in his presence, a moment in his presence, changes everything. Your perspective on everything changes. The realization of the preciousness of life and who we are and, our, and love that flows to your fellow man to your neighbor because you know who they are they are created in god's image and important too and we all have a purpose and a reason and a destiny and so many things come with that uh getting to know god concept i also wanted to take a look at colossians um colossians 2 verse uh let's go from 2 it says um, or let's just read the whole first section here. It says, for I want you to know how great a struggle I have in your, in your behalf and for those who are at Laodicea and for all those who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged having been knit together in love and that they would attain to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding resulting in true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this so that no one will deceive you with persuasive arguments. For even though I am absent from body, I'm nevertheless with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your orderly manner and stability of your faith in Christ. So this line, in whom all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge exist in Christ. To me, I think this is a powerful scientific statement <laughs> that sounds ridiculous to say that but when you meet christ experience his love experience the power and see the world through a created being's eyes you have been created by the creator when you see the world through that lens everything changes you start to see the mathematical brilliance and the the intermeshing and um you know the 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 systems that work interconnectedly from an intelligent place where you can see they've been designed to work together uh you know certain certain creatures we can observe in nature need each other to survive and without each other could never have existed in the first place certain bacteria are that way as well the very first cells could not just divide and reproduce without 
the ability to do that, like that ability, the, the, the complexity of cells is astounding. The simplest cell is so vastly complex and, in, and intelligently put together. It's astounding. And now we can see it and observe it. And so I wanted to direct your attention over to um, a fundraiser for a project. And I've interviewed this guy on my channel before. Um, this is uh, this is the Atomic Biology Institute, and it's called the Truth for Life and Education Project. Um, and I've I put together this page. This is my dad, and several others that have taken on this Atomic Biology Institute and are building um, some educational works for it. Uh, but it's all about how. If we look at biology at the atomic level, you can see God's finger. Uh, he said, consider this verifiable example, uh, fasten your seatbelt. You have probably heard words to the effect, life is in the blood. That's a scripture. Uh, long before we knew what that meant, it was in the Bible. But anyways, it says, those researchers who specialize in blood work will tell you that each of us requires a complete new batch of red buds, blood cells, RBCs, uh, within about every 120 days because our RBCs wear out in that time. A scientist by the name of C.J. Pallister found that a 150-pound male receives about 2.3 million newly made R RBCs every second 24 7 2.3 million new um rbcs which is red blood cells every second 24 hours a day <laughs> another named g or gj tortora determined that each rbc is made of about 280 million molecules of hemoglobin and a third scientist max perutz found that each molecule of hemoglobin is made of approximately 10,000 correct atoms. So when you do the math, this 150 pound male is being given 2.3, 2, 2, 300,000 times 280 million times 10,000 correctly sorted, selected, counted, and precisely assembled, assembled atoms every second. This is about 6,400 quadrillion correct atoms every second 24 hours a day just to build the needed replacement red blood cells in a 150 pound male this is the astounding truth people so i i i ask you to go to that give send go it's give send go.com slash atomic biology please give to that they're looking to raise funds to um, further promote the educational uh, portions of it get some marketing involved in it and also just build up the institute um, there's already several books in uh, that are already published and some others that are being published for teachers uh, and for different levels of people uh, so please take a look at that give send go have a look through it give what you can towards that atomic biology institute and um, help support Truth For Life Education Project. That would be awesome. The goal is to raise 50,000 Canadian um, because it's based in Canada. But, uh, you know, if we exceed that, that's awesome. And uh, I would love to see you support that. I want to take this time to thank you for tuning in. I hope you can see my side of what scientism is and why science itself is a great thing. Um, it's, it's okay to love science, but we need to make sure that we are not falling into scientism and actually worshiping science and it actually being a false science because science itself needs to be open and free to investigate and follow the, uh, the evidence wherever it leads. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends, hit the notification bell so you can get updated when the next video comes out. I appreciate your time. Once again, thanks. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now. To reach the top of the summit. I was about yay high when Yahweh told me to run it. Only a matter of time before my mom needed hit in a hundred. I swore a sign, he told me to pay more attention. He already done it.